lots of projects in progress because you know you open stuff up and you've got bits so i've got some hewlett packard series 80 machines i've got my ibm 51 uh 5160 down there oh yeah that's my commodore pet i've uh, re-powder coated the case and everything um, but i need to fix the monitor a stack of vic 20s um Keyboards. I've got micro B in the middle. I've got some homebrew stuff. Okay, here's the Tech One G. Uh, Tech One G. Yep, yeah, almost working. Almost ready to go. Almost ready to go. So um, a whole bunch of BBC Model Bs on the shelf. It's all my Amstrad. Whoops, Amstrad stuff. Oh yeah. Up there with the pluses as well. Uh, six one two eight plus and a four six four plus. Yeah. Um, hello everyone. I'm Adrian here. And I'm here with uh, Brett, the Clueless Engineer on <laughs> yes. YouTube. Yeah. So w where'd the name come from? Like I just, um, I guess, it, you know, I'm, I'm quite self-deprecating, I guess. I don't, like I say on my about thing that, yeah. you know, don't, I, I don't take things seriously. Don't take me seriously. I, you know, I'm not an expert. I don't yeah. proclaim to be an expert. Um, I'm just, you know, kind of exploring this new stuff. Like quite yeah. often when I open a computer, you know, everyone's seeing it. At the first time I'm seeing it, at the same time that yeah. they're seeing it. Um, so we're just, you know, trying to, you know, figure these things out. So, you know, um, constructive feedback's always welcome, basically, sort of thing. Yeah. So I thought, rather than being, you know, eight bit guru or, you know, <laughs> yeah. th that sort of thing, it's like I'm not like that at all. I'm, you know, I try to be humble. Yeah, I think um, that's often though a lot of the, the hobbyists, you know. Yeah. You because you start off not knowing anything. And oh, exactly. Often that's why you get into it, because yeah. you don't know about it. You're so curious about it. Yeah. You want to know. Yeah. And then often you become like an accidental expert. You know, you kind yeah. of start to, and then it's oh, exactly. like you realize, oh, I'm the only person who cares about this. Thing. Yeah. It's like if you already know a lot about some of these things, mm. you know, if it's like if you use it in your job, maybe you're not that interested in it. You know? Well, yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Whereas if you find this thing and it's new to you, then yeah. you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been quite lucky that, you know, basically the, the guys that uh, watch my video, well, the guys and, you know, 1.01% 1 .01 girls, yeah. sort of thing, but, um, you know, they've been quite uh, quite helpful sort of thing. You know, they'll come and say, oh, you know, they'll correct me or whatever, you know. Yeah. And I said, that's basically what I said. It's like, you know, I'm happy for constructive feedback. Just don't be a dick about it. Yeah. Um, so I've been quite lucky. So... You know, a lot of the machines I look at, you know, well, we don't have, we never had them in Australia, so mm. it's great getting feedback from overseas. You know, I'd, you know, so when I, when I do the video, mm. <laughs> minimal production, but like I said, so I'm seeing it the first time as everyone else, and then as it's uploading and and everything to YouTube, that's when I'll do some research and put, you know, put as much information as I can in in the yeah. video description. The Eastern European or the Soviet machines. Yeah. So this is just something that. I guess because you didn't know about it that you wanted to get into it. Is that yeah, the idea? well, it's, like, I like um, like we're talking earlier. So I think my first videos were about the comics yeah. thirty five. I think. Um, and did you get that by accident or? Um, well, it's, it's a machine I remember seeing. You know, back in my youth. You because oh, okay, yeah. like, so we we had an Amstrad four six four growing yeah. up. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, we we couldn't. Not, not like these days where, you know, you might have this console, that console. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly we didn't have a, a Commodore and an Amstrad and a Spectrum. You well, know, you had, was, you had the one yeah. computer. You had the one that um, parents gave you. Yeah. And then that was it. You had to keep that for the yeah. rest of your schooling. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you always see uh, yeah. in, in the magazines, you know, the, the, the uh, great graphics and all this on these other machines. So you're yeah. always curious about these machines. Um, so I think, like I said, um, I think the comics was the first one, and there weren't many videos mm. about the comics thirty five. So I thought it might be interesting. So I pull it apart, or, you know, have a look, and okay, this that sort of thing, and that's kind of where I started. And then I, I can't remember the first kind of you know, you've got to use you've got to use the correct terminology here. Mm. Soviet, post Soviet, you know, some of them weren't post Soviet, some were Czech or whatever. Yeah. But um, it was one of the machines, and. Um, I think yeah, that's the, people have asked me before is how, how do you find these machines? And I think once you find, once you use the kind of the correct magical search terms, like on eBay, yeah. um, then you start to get recommended other similar ones, and then you okay, get start yeah, to understand. Those, okay, yeah, yeah. So there were machines called the Byte. There were machines called Electronica, mm. and then you just go down this rabbit hole yeah. of all these weird and wonderful machines, mm. um, and, and certainly. 
and it probably you know before the breakup of Soviet Union, you know that you know you had certain machines like like Czech Repu or Czechoslovakia um, or the Slovakian part that like, had the Tesla PMD eighty five, which was a eighty eighty based mm. machine, and then you know they had the electronic of this and and that in different countries. But then after the breakup, there was suddenly this explosion of machines um, in in the early nineties, mostly ZX Spectrum clones. Yeah. Um, but there's just so many, you know, because it depends on, because the, the economy over there was so bad at the time, it was what they could get their hands on. So, you know, you've got all these weird and wonderful different types of keyboards and, uh, you know, because we're used to certain, you know, our machines had, you know, like the, um, the um, oh, I'm just trying to think of the key, uh, keyboard matrix thing that you peel apart, you know. Membrane we, we, yeah, membrane, yeah, membrane keyboard. So, you know, our machines, pretty much were built all the same, similar sort of way. Whereas, um, you know, these machines were just so, you know, that they used what they could yeah. sort of thing, what they had available. Um, so it was just, it's just like a never ending kind of, you know, the VIC-20 is the VIC-20. Yeah. There's only so much you can do, on, although, you know, I mean, uh, Ro Robin, Robin the eight. You know, uh, it's like when you find out that the lightsaber was actually a microphone or something. You know, yeah. Like, you, you know yeah. It's, people have these funny hacks for things. Yeah, know, yeah, so. exactly. So there's still stuff coming out about the Victorian, but it's just, yeah, it was kind of like a niche. It's like, well, there's this machine. It's like, oh, okay. And then it's just never ending sort of thing. So then I'm just working on the, that's a Belarusian bite, which is a ZX Spectrum clone from Belarus. All right. I'm just um, working on making a uh, ZX Spectrum interface. Ah, So okay. this is what I was talking about with the, yeah. um, they all had those custom interfaces. Okay. So, and this obviously the idea is you uh, can use a ZX oh, Spectrum. Right. So that's, that's the idea. Yeah. So, um, so I'm just working on that at the moment. That's pretty cool. You're, you're getting these like through eBay, are they mostly from overseas? Yeah, from yeah, yeah. Um, well, because so certainly they were like never a available. Net importer of, of, <laughs> of, of uh, Soviet computers. Yeah. Then, I guess. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, most most of it's through eBay, which you know, depending, you know, you, you've got to be, you can get some bargains. Yeah. Um, but then you know the the shipping, when you okay, so shipping can be a, it's a significant, you know, hundred two hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but when you look at okay, maybe, but that makes the total cost of it three hundred dollars. It, mm. It's reasonable, but you're kind of you know, throwing away two hundred plus the Jerry Harvey tax, you know, the the GST yeah. that we have to pay now because um, you have to pay that on the product and the shipping. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, so yeah, so yeah, it's mostly on eBay, um, but there are some, you know, there, there's a Russian site called Meshok. Oh, okay. .net, right. which is kind of like a Russian eBay. Obviously, that's um, that's kind of out of bounds at the moment. But there is just mm. so if you just go on there, window shopping. Yeah. There's just so many different uh, weird and wonderful mm. machines, um, and there's like there's some Ukrainian sites and things like that. But they're a bit hard to navigate because they're mostly, you know, it's, the language options are Ukrainian or Russian. <laughs> were, people, were people making a lot of games? I mean, Tetris obviously came out of the Soviet Union. Yeah. So was I'm there just a trying to think of what. I think probably so um, there definitely was. Yeah. So one of the machines I'm I'm building at the moment is is a recreation of the uh, what they call the Radio 86 RK. Okay. So that was a 8080 clone, yeah. kind of homebrew machine that was in the Radio magazine in right. um, 1986. So it was a machine that you could build yourself in the Soviet Union mm. if you could get your hands on the parts. Yeah. And um, so they had that sort of homebrew machine. So games were made made for that that machine. But certainly, I think you find, like again, the um, after the breakup of the Soviet Union and mm. this explosion of say ZX Spectrum clones, yeah. uh, you know, getting into the hands of all these young kids who just you know had this thirst to learn, and you just see incredible stuff yeah. coming out of there. So um, yeah, so yeah, and I, I do wonder sometimes, mm. you know that. Uh, yeah, I mean, how many games and things like that have been lost because they were written by kids? You know, there's, there's every time yeah. we kind of speak to someone who's you know had a Spectrum in the '80s or something, and they say, "Oh, I remember I wrote this game. You know, yes. it was on a tape, and it, yeah. it, it's long gone." You yeah. know? So yeah, like there's probably a lot of software out there that we just are never going to see. Yeah, you know? which but, is a shame. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm just, is, back, is back there then. media for these Russian machines, like discs or tapes that's different to what um, Well, I think there's, so the machines better. I'm, yeah, so the machines I'm kind of working on, I think we're kind of in this in-between period. Mm. Um, mm. There's now kind of like, I think, don't quote me, yeah. this, I always have to don't quote, but I think there's kind of like a standardised kind of specky clone Okay, um, right. from there now and it's got a standard I think a Nemo bus or something like that so whereas the kind of the post you know nine between you know 1990 and 1995 or something mm. there were like you know machines from Moldova and Ukraine and mm. Czech and all that and they had all different inter interfaces yeah so obviously having different in even though they were all ZX spectrums yeah. having a different interface makes it you know you can't just hook up um, a disk drive sort of thing. So I think yeah. of, they all had tapes. So they all, you know, so it was probably a lot of tape software. Mm. Um, that was pretty much standardised. Um, but but I think after that, when they kind of had a standardised design, I think then that would, you know, they would have um, SD interfaces and things like that. Well, certainly yeah. nowadays they do, I, th I think. But so I don't really look at that kind of that those machines i kind of look at these these machines in that period that were built by these like ex-military factories and yeah. they've got these weird and wonderful keyboards and yeah okay and so you you document all of your work on you know on youtube yeah i mean do you uh think about cataloging it in some way like do you have a catalog or something like that or um I, i've started a github so i've got a github okay, and yeah. i started a discord server yeah um so on, on my discord server i've got a channel yeah. for each of the different machines that I've okay, kind of done and that's where that. I kind of shove all my information in yeah um, because like, yeah because the, with, with the with these Soviet post-soviet mm. and Eastern mm. blocks probably should say Eastern block so yeah. we're not excluding anyone the Eastern mm. block machines um, you know there's a lot of information in say Russian or yeah. Hungarian or, or Czech for example mm. uh, very little information in English um, so that that's that's an initial barrier um, but you know, obviously, using Chrome, you can just do auto translate, and the web page is magically done. Um, but um, there's but there's not many kind of videos in English, sort of thing. So you know, by doing the videos, hopefully, it's kind of bringing awareness and also maybe helping other Western yeah. pe people on the West who are interested. Say, you know, you get this machine and it's got all these DIN sockets. Like, how do I power it? How do I um, you know, how do I get video out of it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, what, that's one of the things I, I notice is that with all these machines, the, yeah. these these Spectrum clones, they've all they mostly settled on DIN sockets, mm. uh, which is interesting, which is good because actually, when when you think about some Western machines like the Grundy, New yeah. Brain, or all these, they have these weird and wonderful connectors, mm. custom connectors. Yeah. That you can't get anymore yeah. <laughs> whereas like these soviet machines all use din mm. and so you can go down the jcart and buy din sockets so you can make cables for wow, these machines i hate soldering din plugs they're, they're my least <laughs> i've, I've plug. gotten used to the, the the trick with the din is to if, if you got solder flux mm. flux paste okay. you just um it, oh. dip it in yeah. and it just helps the solder flow yeah because i've just had so many where you know like I'll they just end up all snaggle tooth. I'll, show you. I'll, sh I'll <laughs> show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I've made. I've, I've got some videos where I'm making the, all the. Um, so even though they've all got DIN sockets, yeah. for example, the RGB output, mm. completely different pinouts from machine to machine. But yeah. like I said, you know, like the expansion connectors are, are all different as well. Yeah. Um, even, that, and that would be good, like, you know, to have just the pinouts for things. You know, yeah, you know. yeah, so that's one thing I've started doing. I realised that, you know, I'd, as I started to get more and more machines, it's like, well, probably some of them are going to have the same pinout. Yeah. But I can't remember <laughs> which one. So instead of making a brand new cable every time, I start, like, on, on the Discord, I've got a list yeah. of the RGB pinouts of, of different machines that I've got just to make it easy because like I said I, I don't know if there's any kind of easy reference for, mm. for this sort of stuff so it's not just that but it's it's all these weird and wonderful peripherals that oh yeah you know very, yeah that that you, yeah um so like for example I'm um well oh I've got a um, I've got a Sega Saturn so Sega Saturn was yeah. the first console I ever mm. apart from my dad's Atari 2600 um, so there was um, Game Basic 
for it that came out, but it was Jap Japan yeah, only, right. right? So back in the day, it was impossible. But nowadays, with eBay and all that, yeah. um, you can do it. So one of the things you need for if you want to develop on a on a Windows machine is the dongle that goes between the oh, satin. Right, and yeah. so one, so that's I did a video on that, and I've mm. um, I basically pulled it apart. This is what it is, and I. I, what does that even plug into? Is it in your serial, your parallel? Uh, serial. Oh, it's okay, just serial yeah. on a Windows 95. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So you know, I, I pulled it apart and I documented everything so that if anyone, you know, wanted to make one, so yeah. then now they can do. So yeah. So yeah, it's just they they might think nothing of it, but they might have some kind of rare like bit of hardware or uh, tape or something that's never been archived. Um, you know, so yeah, it's it it is quite. I, well, I think it's important um, to to yeah know this sort of stuff. Yeah, because and so I guess like living um, here in Port Macquarie, like yeah. that, it's a pretty big town nowadays. Like um, <laughs> you know, well I mean, I, I, well, I've got an airport. Know, so I lived here forty years ago. Yeah, you know, and it was. Oh, I can't much imagine. Then, yeah, <laughs> but, um, I can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, but even like you know, when I when I finished school and yep. moved to Sydney, like it was getting bigger. You know, and yeah. it's like yeah, there's. I mean, do you? Do you know other people in this town yep. who are into this sort of stuff? Like, is there kind of a community or a scene or something? Yeah, something? shout out to Jason. Um, yeah. So Jason um, is a guy I, um, I think it was actually through Facebook. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's he's great. He's um, he knows a lot about hardware and stuff, and he's actually an Amstrad guy as well. Okay. Yeah. So he grew yeah, up with I Amstrad, feel like that, especially like a lot of uh, retired sort of professionals yeah. have moved here. And yeah. there must be a lot of the older guys who would know about, you know, IT and engineering and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, there was... Um, and, you know, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of these sort of men's shed type things, you know, for yeah. the old tradesmen. Mm. But, I mean, my wife calls the ACMS the men's shed for geeks, you know, <laughs> yeah. because it's like... I don't know, is that, is that something that you think would happen in towns like this? Like, you know, could you I imagine having a club or something? Well, like I, well so I, I do know a few guys, oh, yeah. um, like my neighbour a few doors over. Mm. Um, you know, he's, he's into computers as well sort of thing, and he knows someone who's... Um, He's, he's got we, we go over every few months and he's he's got basically uh, we have a land party oh, yeah. he's got a lot of um uh, well i'd say they're not four eight they're probably pentium yeah right. you know they're not brand new machines but yeah. he's got a lot of the kind of um 90s early 2000s machines and, and he yeah. and Matt, he tries to match up the monitor the machine and the keyboard uh, and he actually pointed yeah. out like you know we went from beige to silver mm. to black yeah. Sort of thing. So he tries to meet, match all that up, but yeah, that would yeah, that's actually something I've been thinking about. Like if I if I, um, I mean, it's lost a tough my job, thing to do because then you've got to manage yeah. people. You've got to do a lot of things. Yeah. Right? So yeah, like but pay rent. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know, yeah, it's always something that yeah. Once you have a space, you know, that then. Well, yeah, because because there is Facebook, but that's all kind of virtual, and you don't really. Yeah, and I, I think you, in some ways maybe that the internet can suck the oxygen out of some of the offline things. Yeah. You know, there used to be these user groups. You know, like I, I think I mentioned yes. to you offhand that you know I found this old Amstrad yep. three-inch disc. You know, mm. and I had on it like um, the Journal of the Queensland Amstrad Users Group from yep. 1985. You know, and it's like, yeah, that there were these groups of people. You well, know, you actually. Sort of, we actually go discs. yeah you actually yeah. Go, go to a meeting and that yeah yeah like in, and i think that there's probably even a lot of young people who mm. are into like the retro computer stuff that weren't even born when it was around yeah. you know but they're, they're they're not aware of some of these things that are out there like the museum yes. or you yeah. know that there are kind of other groups out there yeah. so yeah i don't know what would be a good way to kind of get the word out or something or, yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's it's yeah but that's certainly like that's something you know that I think I said that we're, we're trying to reach out from the museum, you know, to different mm. areas and see about, you know, linking up with um, get other a, museums and things like get that. Get a big know. bus. Yeah, maybe, maybe like, set, yeah. Set, set all your machines up and just drive oh, up man. and down we'll the do, coast. It's a, whole, it's a bit like Timothy Leary or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Instead of giving out LSD, we'll just give out like you know eight bit games. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hey you know? kid, try this. We put the virtual goggles. Yeah, on, you know? yeah. And, and and it's actually it is, it is surprising the number of people like say import yeah. that have similar kind of like I think I, I bought some. Um, a box of uh, an open box of um, eight inch discs oh, wow. of a fellow who lived just a few streets away sort of thing yeah. and like you know, he, he was retired now mm. um, but you know he had a great setup as well because you know this is the sort of thing he did for, yeah. for 50 years yeah. and so all of this equipment that you got like your oscilloscopes and stuff is yeah. this 
like things that you would use at work or no. would you just <laughs> no. so you've taught yourself this <laughs> yeah well, taught, taught myself this yeah. basically so because yeah most of the stuff i do is software oh, you know, these days because you don't you don't fix resistors and stuff anymore yeah. you just replace a board so that's yeah that's my 51 pcxt imagine you know if they were able to develop these games back then you know yeah. imagine how blown away people would be some some of the games that people especially on the big 20 you know it was yeah. no no graphics it's basically character based um just what they can come up with so yeah, yeah. Well, and that's you know like where i was talking about trying to make a, a twin stick shooter oh yeah yeah, like yeah. The, it's a concept that's yeah. modern but that you can actually do it you know yeah and, and I can't remember if I've actually seen it or if I just imagined, but mm. I'm sure that someone made a Guitar Hero game for the Commodore 64. I wouldn't be surprised. You could do yeah. it, right? Like yeah. you could. Obviously, the controller just has to be something with a couple of buttons, you know, and it yeah, can yeah, yeah. pretty much go in the joystick port. Yeah, and then yeah. You wouldn't have, you know, the the original soundtrack, you know, <laughs> no. but you could do a synth well, version the, of a lot of songs. Well, like yeah. Four channels or something. The, the C64 was awesome. Have those sound. four channels be your four yeah. little frets on your... Yeah. And yeah. It's those things where, yeah, that sometimes where you'll, you'll realise that, like, you know, they could have done it back then. And, and yeah. maybe that there's going to be things that we could be doing now that we haven't thought of. You know, yeah. one day yeah. people look back and say it was so obvious. Why didn't they think of it? Yeah. You know? So... Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's... Yeah, it is always interesting to kind of look back on some of that stuff, you know, and I guess it's... it's you know, there's like steampunk or something where you know people mm. will sort of say imagine if charles babbage had thought of you know actually like if he'd build his computer and then yeah. you know thought of making a video game on it like, yeah yeah <laughs> it would be a steampunk like clockwork <laughs> video game what would that I, look like i remember know? yeah i remember reading a book kind of around that kind of idea yeah and um you know what one of the one of the technical innovations was you know they you they were using punch cards mm. but then they made the punch cards really um slick mm. so that it could read punch cards faster oh, okay. that yeah. sort of yeah. That, that sort of thing yeah so yeah that would have been you know, an interesting what if yeah yeah but you know it's like maybe we're, we're getting into like you know the next mm. steampunk you know of like what if all this 80s technology was yeah repurpose for modern sort of things you yeah know, i get well i suppose cyberpunk is very rooted in 80s aesthetics because mm. that's when it was first made up you know so that we do have like people will make the cyber deck or something you know and it's yeah it's a raspberry pi inside but they'll make it look as much like yeah you know a portable spectrum or something because that's just that's what a cyberpunk yeah. device should look like right yeah. it should look 80s yeah <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah it's the 80s vision of now like yeah. the 2020s but the you know that they had that kind of thing and so mm. yeah maybe like that's going to be you know like i don't know that there'll be some new retro you know like in another 30 years and people will be i guess you know you got, this, you're just trying to think of yeah well, oh, so the iMac aesthetic you know the whole like, like people even talk about y2k aesthetic you know like yeah. all of those iMacs and things you know with the very curvy shapes and things like that like yeah so well i've but my first iMac was the you know the angel poise lamp oh, iMac okay, g4 yeah, yeah. I've still got that downstairs. I'm yeah. never going to get rid of that. Mm. Um, I, it, it doesn't work at the moment, but I want to get it powered up again. But yeah, that sort of thing. I would. Yeah, that is just such an iconic, iconic design. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, interesting to see what they'll be thinking of. Although I, I think eight, you know, the eight-bit machines are still going to be probably at the fore. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see what the kids these days growing up on these on newer machines what they will be into well that's sort of it you know like is it are they going to be nostalgic for the iphone or something you know? yeah and they'll be like another thing I mean, there, there are young people that are really nostalgic for phones with buttons you know and that they will <laughs> want to have like you know a nokia phone or, or be able to phone, you know the, yeah, the, yeah especially in america they love their the, their flip yeah, phones the in america flip phones, and they yeah they want to have like a flip phone with buttons you know and yeah. think it's really cool and have a shopping but so, so like the iphone i think it's the 15 mm. just but it's just what another black rectangle well, that's it. Yeah, like, I guess <laughs> with better cameras and, yeah um uh, it's just yeah but maybe it's yeah i guess it's sort of it's it's in a maybe what they call like a mature phase or something yeah. it's like a piano a piano is such a mature device because mm. they've been around for hundreds of years yeah. that you're not going to make a new design of piano nobody's going to make a piano with rainbow keys yeah you know, like you're not going to make a circular piano <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like that and that maybe it's just reached that point like that the yeah. iPhone is like the piano that we've just said like well we've worked out the perfect way to make a piano yeah. that's what it looks like that's what it's yeah. got to look like because when you go to the opera if you see a guy 
and he has a Casio organ you're going to walk out so you <laughs> yeah. have to have a piano that's yeah. this shape yeah and the Maybe it's just going to be like from now on, all phones have to be black. Rectangles. It's just, it's, yeah, iterations. It's yeah, hard to say because I mean, yeah. cars are functional. Yeah. And we haven't stopped designing cars. Like, cars still obviously sell on looks. Like, people don't buy a car that's just a block, you know. With... Yeah, but that's all kind of, again, you know, you've, even with the EV cars, you know, yeah. you've got a you've got a front trunk mm. <laughs> you know it's you, you've still got the same kind of design but uh, well, I guess like going back to phones like the, the Nokia phones mm. uh, that, that we used to have all the weird and wonderful you know there was, there was, trying, there was especially there was with 3G there was explosion you know in around the year 2000 there were, there were like circular phones you know yeah. I talk about it's stupid to have a circular piano but they were phones that had a circular yeah. keypad and like, yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> well, basically, yeah, we were, well, yeah, because that's when we were trying to figure out mm. how people are going to use all these new technologies, how they're going to use faster internet access, how they're going to use the camera, yeah. how they're going to use color screens and all that. So, yeah, it's just trying to figure it out. And then, obviously, like, like I think that someone that says, you know, everything evolves towards crabs or something. So, yeah. everything evolved towards yellow, uh, black rectangles. Well, yeah, and, <laughs> you know, like I said, the Cambrian explosion, it's like, yeah. I think it was. You know, the evolution of, like, the eye and the rigid skeleton oh, or something okay. like that, you know. And yeah. as soon as animals could see yeah. and move towards things they could see, yeah, there was just this proliferation of yeah. different body... And there are, there are creatures that have no correlation to things around now. You yeah. know? So things that are kind of partway between, like, a vertebrate or a lobster or something, yeah. you know, that there's all of these strange things, you know, that... Mm think like are we losing something but then on the other hand you know we do have things like the raspberry mm. pi or like yeah how do we know you know that like you know that, that i can just go online and like for five bucks get a little arduino knockoff yeah. or something and then just make something for, we, there are these these small cheap yeah. things still out there you know and, and the, i'm sure that you could well, you, actually you can still buy z80s brand yeah. new you yeah. know um well i think xylog has been bought by someone else but um, you can still buy, you know, 2021 20, manufactured Z80s. Yeah. So there's, you know, there is still a lot of use for simple, mm. simple microcontrollers, basically. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that you could, you know, you could wire up something like an Arduino to a little screen and a keyboard or something mm. and just build a tiny computer with it, mm. you know. And so, yeah, yeah, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's going to be for the next generation to do. Like, even then, I don't know, like. If, you know, maybe 10 years from now, if we have portable devices that are doing AI on the level of, like, current, you know, sort of, mm. uh, you know, like, expensive graphics cards or something, yeah. you know, could, could we have, like, a tiny little device that's got a learning thing in it, and mm. it's like, you could just, you know, you could build a robot, like, build a Lego robot, just mm. stick some motors on, just wire it into this yeah. thing and then drop it on the floor and say you're alive now and then it's just <laughs> going to learn to walk you know yeah, and eventually yeah. walk around like like well there are yeah you, there are those um i've seen youtube videos where people you know program these ai things and basically yeah. say okay starting off here you've got to get to here you've mm. got some obstacles and they just run iteration and after a while yeah it just yeah but but it's it's one thing to see it on the screen but i think yeah, yeah like if you could just Get that yeah, processing yeah, power. Just plug it into like a little thing, like yeah. just stick it on a toy or something, mm. and just say, okay, like this is this is your body. Mm. What are you going to do with it? You know, and then it'll just figure it out. Like, yeah, there could be yeah, just some really amazing things coming up mm. in the future that we, we haven't thought of. So yeah, you know, I, yeah, because yeah. I really hope that my kids are going to get the opportunity to have that same discovery and invention mm. and stuff like that, that that we did when we were young. You know that. But well, they're not going to mm. be just consumers, you know, that they won't be downloading yeah. things, that they'll actually yeah. be making things and coming up with ideas. Mm. And I, I think that, yeah, that there's often a feeling that it's like, we often have this feeling, it's like where people say everything's been done before, you know, mm. but, but every time people say that, you know, then another thing gets done. Like, you yeah. know, there was, was it Lord Kelvin or someone who you know, infamously said in like the 1890s mm. that science had been pretty much finalized. It was just a matter <laughs> of like, you know, getting decimal points. And, yeah. Well, it's like, know, look, it's like, look oh, at... Oh, we, we can't explain why Mercury's orbit doesn't, um, you know, track properly. Yeah. But that's that's a minor thing, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. of course, you know, Einstein came along and said, well, actually, the reason for that is because, you know, when the sun spins, it drags space around because space is a giant fluid that's... <laughs> yeah. You know, and completely just turned everything on its mm. head. So, yeah, yeah you know, the, the, there's... I'm sure well, there's still well, things that uh, people can, you know, dig yeah. into. And well, my, like, you know, so my son's in, in year 11 next year. So, you know, all trying to think, oh, you know, what's he going to do at uni? What's he going to do at uni sort of thing? And I, I just 
keep saying to my wife and and you know son it's like well the job i'm doing now kind of didn't exist when i was in yeah even when i was in uni this job didn't exist yeah. you know um you know telecommunications or mobile network phone mm. mobile networks so it was still i think we were analog yeah uh that was you know we we didn't get digital at that stage i think digital came in when i was at uni um but you know we're now on coming up to well 5g is being deployed um, so who knows what job he'll be doing in the future yeah. it may not be you know it could be something AI or, who knows it's mm. just we just don't know it's yeah. um yeah. yeah I've got some of my Soviet TVs and, and stuff mm. so yeah so all of this has to go <laughs> so my wife can park a car yeah